plant genetics. And also, when back in France, I was asked to build a bioinformatic team. I'm not myself a bioinformatician, but uh, I was asked to organize the interface between plant breeder and geneticist and uh, bioinformatician. So I have uh, uh, quite an experience in uh, manipulating biostatistic as well as bioinformatic tools, uh, but as a user, not as a, a developer of such tools. So most of, of what I'm going to talk about uh, today is based on uh, personal experience in the framework of a project called DATO, uh, which was funded by the Generation Challenge Program and involved uh, a broad range of scientists uh, from various countries. Here, uh, you may recognize some of them uh, who are working in India, Dr. B, Dr. Pagaya, who work on Chikpi, and Dr. Rajiv Varshne, who uh, uh, is also working for uh, GCP. Um, so we represented uh, a, a quite a diverse uh, set of people working on a range of crops, uh, myself on the rice, some people on sorghum and barley for the monocots, but also on chickpea and bean. There was someone from Siat, Mathieu Blair, and on potato and cassava. So very large of monocots and dicot crops. And the project itself has as an objective to produce a data set based on allele diversity at candidate genes for these different uh, crops. And these candidate genes were supposed to be genes uh, related with drug tolerance in this crop. So we are exactly in the uh, topic of this training course, uh, looking for uh, alleles, new alleles in various crops. So most of the examples I'm going to talk about today are related uh, with this uh, uh, ad hoc project and uh, notably uh, its rice component. Uh, I'm a rice person and uh, that's my favorite uh, uh, topic. And uh, notably a paper from uh, uh, Philippe, who was a PhD student, who worked with us. Um, a few other examples I will take in uh, other projects, notably a salinity project we had uh, with uh, some European partners on, uh, uh, on rice notably some Portuguese partners. All uh, uh, my presentation, the paper I'm going to talk about and the softwares you are going to use uh, will be uh, given to you on a USB key. If you want to copy it and bring it home, it's fine. And uh, all my talk will be, will, have, uh, uh, will be associated with a practical uh, because it's one thing to speak about concept, about uh, method, it's another thing to practice. I think you can only understand when you do things yourself, when you practice yourself. So I'm going to develop uh, the concept during the lecture, but you are going to have to uh, reproduce the stuff yourself during the practical. So why uh, uh, is this topic of allele mining uh, so uh, timely? Uh, well, the first uh, uh, statement is that uh, plant breeding induces a strong reduction of cultivated genetic diversity. Here you have an example of uh, wheat in France, uh, going from uh, 1910 to uh, 2010, uh, so 100 century of evolution. Uh, here you can see how the number of cultivated varieties evolved. So there was a relatively uh, important increase. And here you have indices, two different indices of diversity. An A index that shows that there was a sharp decrease between the 50s and the 70s. And uh, some kind of heterogeneity index that shows that there was a sharp decrease up to the 70s. Uh, the main reason why there was such a decrease in diversity was due to the reduced diversity within varieties. Actually, more and more in France, we are cultivating pure lines, uh, fixed material, uh, while uh, in uh, uh, the early century, uh, we were uh, growing more population type of uh, varieties. Besides this decrease in uh, uh, genetic diversity, changes are occurring in agriculture, 
uh, changes in the production system, either through intensification or through trying to reduce the input use. Both are occurring in different areas of the world. Of course, everybody heard about climate change. So this means that new varieties are always required. And uh, a statement of uh, gene bank managers is that very large part of the diversity that store uh, in, in situ in, in uh, sorry uh, in the gene bank is not used. Uh, if you ask an uh, 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 gene bank manager, uh, they have more than 100,000 horizon sativa accession in their gene bank, but uh, less than 10% is really used on a regular basis. So most of the diversity is in use. So far, we could not do much about that, but there was, uh, but uh, recently occurred the sequencing revolution. Now we have sequencing tools available, and uh, these sequencing tools allow us to make use of this diversity uh, at a reasonable cost. Now it's possible at a reasonable cost to envision, to sequence uh, genes into various varieties and to look at the allele within these genes. So we are exactly at the point where people are starting to think, well, it's reasonable to sequence a variety. You know? uh, even five years behind, it was not feasible. So you want to do allele mining, and we, that's what we wanted to do in the ad hoc project. So the first issue was uh, how to choose the gene we were going to work on, on what basis. So uh, there are several possibilities. First, you have preliminary data. Uh, most of you uh, have probably already uh, um, detected QTLs in mapping population. So you have this starting point that you have QTLs uh, that are uh, uh, um, covering areas where you have interesting genes. Unfortunately, QTLs are known to have a very large confidence interval, notably with the population size we are manipulating ordinarily. So uh, generally, the confidence interval is between 10 and 20 centimeters. And under 10 to 20 centimeters, you have many genes. So you need to find ways to uh, decrease uh, the number of genes uh, you want to work on. So if you have done QTL mapping, then the next step to reduce, to have a better resolution, would be to go to meta-analysis, pulling together all results of QTL mapping, to do fine mapping, or to develop near the genetic lines, or the, the, least, uh, the uh, most recent uh, technology is association mapping. And this is something I will talk about uh, tomorrow, uh, what's the advantage of association mapping in comparison with QTL mapping, and what can it help, it help you to do in the framework of identifying new allele or new genes of interest. So all this technology allows you to go from a very large to a relatively low number of genes. Uh, there are some examples already of positional cloning of QTLs, notably in rice. Uh, now, uh, I would say it's something feasible. So you could imagine to access to genes of interest through positional cloning. But in many cases, what you will have to do is to rely on literature. Literature on your own species or literature on a species that's related to your species. So I want to make a special mention for Arbidopsis. A lot of work has been done on Arbidopsis. A lot of genes have been studied and generally if you are working on dicots, it's very interesting to use it as a comparison point. If you are working on monocots, it's less of you. So uh, in this, in this uh, respect, in, on this topic, I, I think that reviews are particularly interesting. So if you go to uh, journals such as Trends in Plant Science, Current Opinion in Plant Science, or Critical Review in Plant Science, uh, you can find a uh, review on a trait of interest and uh, that lists all the genes that can be uh, contributing to the trait. Uh, myself, I, uh, I, I've contributed to a paper from um, uh, a PhD student of our lab, which was on root development gene in rice. Uh, I worked a lot on drought tolerance and the way we uh, 
uh, attack drug tolerance was through root development. So a lot of my work is on uh, roots. So this was a paper uh, assessing what were the genes known to contribute to root development in mice. And recently we did the same thing on the salinity tolerance gene. And what I would say is that if you are a PhD student or if you are starting to work on a gene or a gene family, very interesting thing to do, since you will have any way to review the literature, is yourself to publish a review on the existing gene. At a given point, uh, it makes sense to make this review, and uh, 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 journals are interested in pu publish such articles. Okay, otherwise you can look at biosynthetic pathway. I will give an, an, an example. Or you can look at uh, a specific uh, gene type. Sorry such as uh, uh, transcript, transcription factor uh, that are particularly <coughs> interesting in the framework of, uh, for example, uh, drug tolerance, because they are known to uh, play a role in uh, uh, regulating the expression of genes. So um, this is an example of uh, data extracted from uh, literature synthesis. So here you have a list of genes. Uh, list of locus, the protein A, uh, the uh, protein in a uh, uh, database which is called Uniprot, the position on the rice genome, uh, on which chromosome it is and uh, exactly uh, uh, what place, and the description of the role of the gene, and then the red one. So, uh, there, there, are, there is a total of 172 genes in this paper, so you can see that the number of genes that contribute to the, uh, to, to the building of a trait can be large, and you need to find ways to reduce this number because it's clearly impossible to work in depth uh, on so many genes. So in bold, uh, there are the genes that have been validated, not by us, but by uh, 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 various uh, people on the, on the planet, uh, by uh, running Northern, by doing microarray or uh, RT-PCR. So then uh, you go down to 35 genes, which is already a lot, but that's a way, uh, through the use of literature, uh, to get to a reduced number. Other solution is to uh, look at the biosynthetic pathway. Uh, this is a um, pathway that uh, uh, drive the, the production of starch uh, in cereal. Um, and uh, you have all the enzymes that contribute to the production of amylose on one side or amylopectin uh, on another side. And uh, with a PhD student, we worked on uh, uh, all the sorghum genes that, that were involved in this biosynthetic pathway. Actually, uh, we could not work on all of them, so we had to choose uh, a few of them, we choose five in this pathway, they are uh, marked in red. Uh, why not to work on all? It's just because we could not afford to do all that, it was too much work. Huh? So uh, based on the results obtained by other people on maize, we decided to focus on this, this one as the most interesting one. In the framework of ad hoc, uh, we took a broader perspective, which was uh, to look at the water stress response pathway. So if you have a stress, uh, then uh, 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 there is a signal, signal perception by the plant and the transduction of these signals. There is control of the transcription and stress response, response mechanism. Among the stress response mechanism, we choose to work on uh, water use efficiency on one side, and the sugar metabolism and growth regulation. And the people that were participating to this other project were interested by the genes that are listed here. So Erecta uh, is uh, uh, kinase from the, the kinase family, the transcription factor, and it plays a role in a, a stomatal uh, number and uh, uh, cell size, and contribute to water use efficiency. Drug one, a was a, is a transcription factor uh, that has a role uh, in uh, uh, drought uh, responsive element. ADS with uh, a 
also called the ASR gene, uh, are genes that are supposed to have two roles. One role is uh, to act as a transcription, transcription factor for uh, the production of uh, sugar, so it plays a role in sugar metabolism. And the other role is to act, to, uh, act as a chaperone, protecting protein degradation during stress. And we look also uh, at uh, uh, enzymes involved in sugar metabolism, CDFA, sucrose A, sucrose substrate synthase. Sorry, I'm. Uh, I did something wrong. So, um, I mentioned several sources of evidence, but uh, of course the best solution is to use several of them. Huh? You can use position information, such as uh, position of a QTL on the map. Uh, you can use uh, expression data. Uh, you have run a, a microarray and you have uh, identified genes that are uh, expressed under stress. You can have information on uh, gene function by uh, looking at literature. You can have uh, population information. We we'll see this uh, later on. Uh, indices of selection on the gene you are interested in. And uh, the best uh, uh, gene you can work with are at the intersection of these various uh, uh, sources of evidence. So here you have an example of what we did on salinity. Uh, we had uh, uh, a map with the QTL for different uh, traits or different studies, studies that were positioned. Uh, in, in black, you have the markers. In blue, you have uh, uh, genes that were uh, um, known from the liter literature, underlying those that were validated by functional studies. And uh, uh, you we put also gene coming from a, um, a microarray, uh, differential expression between a, a salt condition and a non salted condition, and we had everything on the same map. So we can very easily see that this area is quite important for um, salinity tolerance, and we can uh, uh, select the genes that are uh, below the confidence interval in this area. So uh, the problem uh, when selecting genes is it's uh, rarely uh, it's rare that a gene is isolated. Generally, genes belong to a family. Uh, about two thirds of the genes uh, belong to a gene family. And a very important issue you have to ask yourself before starting is how many genes are in the family you are interested in. Um, it's a very important element of choice because if there are too many, you are not going to be able to work with this family. So if it's unknown, you have to determine it, how many genes are uh, in the gene family. First example, uh, I spoke about the starch pathway and the genes that controlling the production of uh, uh, amylose in rice, this waxy, uh, and there is only one. It's an isolated gene. So this is very favorable condition. We want to work on uh, this uh, uh, gene. There is only one. The ASF or uh, ABS stress reflecting, you have already six genes in rice. They are represented here. They have similar structure, but they are not absolutely identical. Huh? How come uh, we have gene families? It's because uh, uh, plant story is a story of duplication. Uh, there have been many duplications, wood genome duplication as well as uh, uh, tandem duplication. And uh, uh, this means that at the end, we have um, sets of uh, genes that are um, resulting from duplication, but that evolved since the duplication. So they have similarity, but they are not all identical. And generally, in the gene family, they do not have all the same function. Okay. 